about all these conferences are great. We talk about theory, all these awesome things that we can do with technology. Um, but it's really about how we use them in the real world. So that's that's really what we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about some different ways marketing and UX can work together. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Cliff uh, from Denver, Colorado. I am the Joomla UX team lead, Joomla marketing leadership. Uh, I write for the Joomla community magazine. I'm the G Denver Joomla user group organizer and Joomla Day Denver organizer. I get tired just reading that. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> if you're wondering how I do all of that, I, maybe you could tell me. I, I don't know. It's all kind of the same things. For me, it's all Joomla. It's all I'm working towards the same thing. So, and that's it's a little about, about what we're going to talk about. In real life, um, <clears throat> I'm, I love to have fun. I'm from Denver. Uh, it's about middle, Midwest USA. It's a beautiful picture. Got a lot of snow. Um, I love to show off. Um, I travel a lot. I'm a musician. You may have seen me the other night. Um, <clears throat> I like to take pictures. Uh, I'm always having fun. Visit my website. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I don't have Snapchat yet. Um, I don't think I'll get one. But uh, yeah. So here's what we're going to cover today. Um, working together. That's what this is really about. Working together. Different ways we can work together. Um, we're going to go over some, you know, some theory, some processes, definitions. And then how we use that theory in the real world. Um, then we can provide some examples and some stats and some other fun stuff. Maybe some useful tips. <coughs> Not making any promises, but um, hopefully something helps you. And what we're really all talking about in business, community, everything we do is the bottom line. Like we do all this work for these things. How does it benefit us? You know, we need to <coughs> we need to provide solutions. We need to make money. We need to provide results. And it's all about the bottom line. So. Yeah, what I hope we'll take with you today are ideas, insights, inspiration. I'm just going to kind of give you my take on some of these things, and I hope that you come up with your own ideas, and maybe it inspires you to think about things a little bit differently or come up with your own ways of doing things. Um, I, my mind is a little crazy, so I don't expect uh, anybody to follow all the things that I do. I just hope to inspire people to do their own creative things. So. <clears throat> okay, so that. Technology is most useful when it solves problems in the real world. I said that wrong, but you get the point. Um, all this stuff is great, <clears throat> but how we use it is the most important. No matter what your role is in your organization, your business, your community, your job is to solve problems. That's why people hire us. Um, technology is a problem for people, and that's why we have jobs. So, absolute truth, we can solve more problems when we work together. There's only so much I can do as an individual, but as a community, as he was just saying in the last keynote, I love that. Um, we can change the world. You know, when if we work together as a community, we can change the world. I believe that, and that's that's why I do all this stuff. So, let's cover some definitions just so we know what we're talking about. Um, okay, marketing. Um, I, and I pulled these from Google. Just uh, I was kind of just Googling for stuff. So marketing, action, business, promoting, selling products, services, market research, advertising. Um, you know, sheep farmers are unable to market their lambs, for example. As we can see, marketing is, uh, you know, became popular in the early 1900s and continues to be popular today. User experience. The overall experience of a person using a product such as a website or computer application, especially in terms of how easy or pleasing it is to use. If a website degrades the user experience too much, people will simply stay away. I didn't think that was the most useful definition, so I googled US definition. And the definition for that is the UX is absolutely seamless and users prefer that. Um, and then according to Google, um, UX uh, was very popular in the 1800s. Um, it peaked in popularity um, somewhere in 1930. Um, and it seems to be on the decline. Um, so, pro tip, don't trust anything you read on the internet. Um, I don't know how they're gathering that data. Um, it's some kind of, you know, I was thinking maybe it's some the, the letters UX. I, I don't know how they measure that from the 1800s, but uh, obviously not accurate information. So, question everything you see on the internet, and we'll have some more examples of that. Um, all of these are real, by the way. You'll be able to spot the fake ones pretty easily, hopefully. So, processes, objectives, very similar. Marketing and UX have very similar things. And like, wow, like, look at all this stuff. You've got marketing, architecture, design. There's like a thousand acronyms. 
it's just too much. Um, you know, my first draft of my presentation had all of this stuff in it, and I was like, this is ridiculous. This is not, I mean, these are useful, and these are all, on, if you follow me on Pinterest, I have a billion of these. Um, but it's, it's hard to communicate all of this stuff, and all of these things are important. This is not a great way to communicate to your clients or to anybody else. I mean, it would take me an hour to read all of the things in here. So how do we say all of that without saying all of that? That's, that's the marketing and UX challenge. In marketing, we want to have a short, simple message that appeals to people. And in UX, we want to direct people's attention. We want to help them navigate through their sites. But we can't, we can't put all of those things in here like you do this and you, we can't necessarily instruct them. Icons, visualization, those are the tools that marketing and UX both use. So that, that, that is my challenge. Anybody who knows me knows that I've got a billion ideas and I talk and I go on and on and I've got pages and pages of stuff. It's not a great way to communicate and I've been, uh, I've been working on that. So pro tip, TMI equals TLDR. Which too much information equals too long, didn't read. Um, there's an awesome, funny TLDR Wikipedia text message uh, is a brief electronic form of miscommunication. And this is a hilarious Twitter. There's like a million of these. Basically, they take wiki and they just kind of condense it down into one sentence and it's always really funny. But it's a good example of what we're talking about. And bonus tip, don't use too many acronyms, especially in marketing. We've got ROI, KPI, APIs. This, the, if you have more acronyms in a sentence than words, um, it's pretty likely that your clients have no idea what you're talking about. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we have to communicate our ideas clearly, and it's difficult because there's a lot of aspects. Um, but the easier you can make it for people, the better they will understand you. I'm learning that. So I made this little chart. Um, this is my yin and yang of marketing balance. I like to bring balance. I like to pretend I live in the matrix. Um, I know that I don't, so it's, you don't have to tell me that. But basically, we've got a problem. Our users have a problem. Um, what marketing does is it brings awareness to those people that are searching for a solution, whatever that problem may be. They need something that helps them. Marketing brings awareness to the product or whatever the solution might be. Then when they get to the user experience part, that's where they perceive if this solution can actually help them. The solution may be there to help them, but they need to perceive that it's helpful to them in order for it to actually help them. And you can kind of see, I like this, because uh, they kind of overlap, and they do overlap in many ways. Um, you know, there's a point where one ends and the other begins, but they work together in many ways. Um, <laughs> here's another chart that I just whipped up real quick. It's a uh, user-centered process. I think I took all of those things, and they really kind of boil down into four areas, in my opinion. Um, you know, marketing is marketing. Um, I kind of consider UX to be, you know, the marriage of design and development in many ways. Um, from a technical standpoint, there's a lot more to it, obviously. Um, and then support, uh, you know, what happens, how you interact with your customers, how you support them, how you continue the relationships after they've, you know, bought your product or come in contact with you. So, in my opinion, those everything kind of boils down into those four things um, from a theoretical standpoint. So, which one's the most important? Um, According to my own research, um, all four of them on a scale of 1 to 100 are 100. Um, it's, I know this isn't a very useful chart, but the point is when all of these things are balanced is when you really achieve success, in, in my opinion. Uh, I know that's a ridiculous chart. So I found a, a better chart on Pinterest that, uh, you know, I mean, this, this basically in a nutshell kind of covers both processes. Um, both processes are powered by research and analytics. Um, both use cycles. Uh, a UX cycle might be an agile sprint, or in the Joomla community, we have release cycles, um, sort of thing. A, a marketing cycle could be if you're doing SEO for clients, usually it's on a monthly basis. Um, you know, your first week you do research, and then we like that because we can bill our clients every month. So that's a useful cycle as a business owner. Um, but they're both cycle based, and you get, you, you get to the end of the cycle, and you take what you've learned, and you apply it to your process, and then you make your process better, and you get better results for your clients, et cetera. They're both goal oriented. The goal is results, and you want to continually improve your results. <coughs> so some other terms we're seeing that kind of demonstrate, I mean, it's kind of the same thing that we're talking about. Customer experience is a big thing, just the experience of, you know, when a, somebody enters your sales cycle, like what is the experience? How do you bring them into your, into your company? And wh what happens after they buy and support? Content marketing is a huge topic. Storytelling, basically 
telling stories in your content and your marketing that relate to your audience, human journeys, personal relationships, user-centric design. It's, it's all based around our audience. We want to think about our audience. And that is just as true in marketing as it is in UX. Um, we're going to talk about that more. So a couple ways uh, UX and marketing can work together. Research, we all do research. Marketing research is generally you know, demographics, industry, you kind of see that in both. When you put those, the two collaborative efforts together, you know, user research for UX might be motivational, psychology. When you put those, that body of research together, it gives you a much wider picture of your audience. Not only do you know where they're from, you also know what they're thinking about, what they like, what are their preferences. Um, so if the two teams work together, you just have this huge, you know, you basically doubled your research efforts. So that's good, and it helps both teams. Um, seamless unified materials, style guides, pattern libraries, brand manuals, um, the next slide kind of talks about, they're all kind of the same thing these days. Um, internet design, your social media, you want your website and your social media channels all have the same branding, so you know, if somebody clicks your content on Facebook and they go to your website, it's kind of the same thing, you know, you're, you're leading them a seamless experience. Everything that they visit looks the same. The same is true with graphic design, branded materials, if you have any printed materials or things that you sell at a point of sale, brick and mortar stores. All those things work together. They're all based on brand materials. Um, and user experience is a very real world thing as well. It doesn't just happen on the internet. You know, everybody, everybody in here is having a user experience right now. And I hope it's a good one. I'm trying to make it good. So, um, and at the end of the, at the, end of the cycle, um, you can collaborate on the analysis and support. You know, UX can provide valuable insights to marketing and vice versa. And a lot of the UX research I've been doing for Joomla has, it's, uh, we're doing a lot with it in, on the marketing team. And it's, it's, some of it is very valuable to what we're doing. Um, and that's why I'm on both teams, because I really believe that both need to work together. Uh, and, and they help each other. So style guides are the new brand manual, in my opinion. Um, a brand manual, this is the awesome Joomla brand manual that we use all the time, defines our materials, our culture, our colors, our message, but also, you know, our fonts, color schemes, that sort of thing. Uh, we're actually working on a style guide for Joomla that if anybody wants to help me with that, please let me know because I would need some. Um, but basically, it's an online version of a brand manual, and we see that all the time, and I've got some links at the end. Um, where you can see that in action. Uh, you know, if you go to Starbucks, they've got a style guide, a pattern library. It's, it's basically all their branding materials, but it's just online. It also defines uh, coding standards, uh, different things that you would do on the web, those sorts of things. So it kind of goes beyond a printed brochure, which is what you know a traditional brand manual might be. Today's day and age, everything's on the internet, so it kind of makes sense to combine the two of them. And I find the two terms are pretty interchangeable at this point. Uh, so the UX team inherits the brand guidelines from marketing. They set them in the brand. Um, and it makes life easier. Um, <coughs> basically, uh, my entire presentation, I'm not really trying to reinvent the wheel with my design here, but um, it actually does adhere to the Joomla brand manual. Um, I'm using the fonts and the colors. and It actually made that easier because I didn't have to go through this process of seeing what font's going to work the best? And then I'm, you know, that's like a whole day sometimes. And I, there's nothing I hate more than rifling through fonts. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to use Open Source Sans because that's the Joomla font. And I know what all the hex numbers are. It just makes my life easier. Um, on the marketing team, sometimes it makes our life harder when people don't follow that. They're like, well, I'm just going to make my own logo or use these different shades. And they kind of try and reinvent the wheel. And we say, no, you can't do that. You have to follow the brand guideline. And it would have been easier if they just did that. They just really created a whole bunch of extra work for them. So it kind of takes a lot of the work out of the equation. Say, okay, I have to use these things. And it, you kind of take all the work out of that. Sometimes that's a hard process to decide fonts, colors, that sort of thing. Um, so it, it just, it's all there to make everybody's life easier. Um, and we obviously want to you know, reflect our clients and organizations' friends. So, so UX concepts, psychology. Um, I did forget to mention at the beginning, I, I, ha I was a music major when I went to college and I also minored in psychology unwillingly. I had to change my major and I had to minor in psychology and it was not a planned thing, but wow, um, how valuable is that skill right now? Um, pe some people ask, what's the difference between a web designer and a UX designer? And from a purely resume point of view, it seems to be a background in psychology. That seems to be the, the main difference between those. That's what UX recruiters are looking for, background in psychology. So we want to understand users' motivations, and we want to empathize with our users, and we 
want everything to be usable and accessible. And our end goals, um, you know, we see these terms a lot in UX. We want to enjoy, surprise, delights. Um, kind of brings something like this to mind when I think of delight. Um, just, Julie Andrews did not say this in The Sound of Music, but when I think of delight, um, that's not necessarily an emotion that applies to me personally, and I see, it's just a word. We're, we're, we're talking about a positive outcome. Um, in the real world, um, not everything's delightful, and that's, it's, not, it's more of a problem of, I think, terminology, just because it doesn't apply to everything. Um, some examples would be, I mean, I've never used an internet website or an application and been like, oh, that was so delightful, and went on with my, had some tea or something like that. I'd never, I've never said that. Um, it's just not an emotion that applies to me. Um, you know, in the real world, there's some, there's some bad things. The real world is not always a pleasant place, and that word actually does not apply to many things, and that's, that's really the only problem I have with it, is it doesn't necessarily apply to everything. And when I was first learning about UX, I was like, what is this delight, do I have to delight people now? Like, that's, that's, just, that's not me, really. Um, a good example um, would be a couple, a couple weeks ago, I had my jug meeting in Denver, um, and I was setting up, getting ready for my presentation, this guy comes in, he's like, well, I, I'm looking for somebody to help me with this Joomla website, and I was like, okay, I'm like, you know, just sit down, we'll have pizza, and talk. he's like, well, I have to leave, you know, I just need, it's a non-profit, and I'm thinking, okay, not going to get paid for this, but you know, like, what's your nonprofit? And it was something uh, about he's. It's an organization that helps young women that have been kidnapped and put into the sex slave trade, prostitution stuff. And when he said that, I was like, wow. Um, I mean, I, I was trying to think of a good example to explain this, and I, I mean, that just like hit home because that's not. That's not something I can add delight to, nor would I. It's not appropriate to. I mean, does that mean that I'm not going to provide them with a good user experience? Because I was like, yeah, I'll absolutely help you with that, because that's a horrible thing. Um, but delight doesn't really factor into that equation. Enjoyment. The, nobody really wants to have any surprises in an environment <laughs> like that. So does that mean I can't give them a good user experience? I, if anything, I'm going to try and give them a better one, because it's a very simple <coughs> topic. Um, and you know, that's just, I mean, that's a pretty harsh example, but I have a lot of friends that are lawyers, you know, I mean, people going through family courts, wills, divorces, that sort of thing. It's hard to add delight to something like that. I mean, really, again, what we're talking about is a positive outcome. And it's just terminology. I think those, those terms kind of turn people away from UX sometimes, and that's why, that's why people can, might have, they're like, I don't know about this whole delight thing. So if we kind of change the terminology, we have to communicate what we're actually trying to do appropriately. Um, so some of those terms don't necessarily apply all the time. Um, so some marketing concepts. Um, brand messaging, building awareness and influence. We're gonna target our audiences and our competitors. We're gonna track them, we're gonna convert them, we're gonna capture them. It starts to sound a little ominous, you know, if you say it like that, you, know, you might turn into this guy. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen Chronicles of Riddick. Anyone know what I'm talking about? But, one person, nerd alert. Ooh, okay, one of my favorite sci-fi movies ever. Um, you know, this is the Lord Marshal of the Necromongers, which is a ghost army hell bent on the destruction of humanity. Um, his message is twisted and evil, but he's a great marketer. Uh, very convincing, you know. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not communicating to anybody. Like, this is not the message that we want to send to our clients. Definitely not in our branding materials, but you know, the terminology, I mean, it kind of, you know, the word conversion, I mean, it applies to religion, which I'm not going to talk about because it's a very sensitive topic, but, you know, we start to get into these images we're targeting and tracking and analyzing and, you know, security is an issue. People are worried about data. We just want to make sure, and, and again, all we're talking about are positive outcomes. We need to track our progress. We need to see what the competition's like, but we just need to make sure that we're not communicating with those terms to people in the real world because it scares them. It is a little scary. Um, so, how it works in the real world, you know, marketing creates awareness. Marketing makes promises and drives traffic to your website. Um, UX, it's our job to turn that traffic into users. Okay, so marketing brings it in and then we interact with them. User interactions create the leads and the sales that marketing is looking for. Uh, and experience, the user experience, the experience of our users, will, it builds the reputation and perception of not only your website, but your brand and your company as well. So both processes need each other. And we're gonna, a couple more funny 
examples here. So this is marketing without UX, and it's kind of a funny example. You see this all the time. Bars have things like this. Um, it's slightly deceptive advertising. I mean, marketing without UX can be very dangerous, especially when alcohol is involved. So if somebody says there's free beer, and I go in there and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, we only have free Wi-Fi. I mean, if it was this crowd, somebody's going to get hurt. I mean, seriously, that's not, it's not funny at that point. But basically, we see this on the internet all the time. Um, it's, you know, it's like, click here and you get this, and we'll have more examples of that in a second. But you know, we're kind of, they're making a promise that they're not really going to keep. You know, they're trying to dra drag you in with a, and it's a funny joke. I mean, it's uh, nobody really. I mean, if somebody actually fell for this, they'd just be like, really. Um, but you get the point. So UX without marketing um, is a lot like Field of Dreams. Anybody not familiar with Field of Dreams? Yes. Has anybody not seen it? Because I would love to explain it. <laughs> okay, so it's this movie in the USA where. Kevin Costner basically lives on a farm and he starts having these dreams about baseball players showing up at his farm, like old, like the greatest baseball players that ever lived. And so basically he plows his farm and they're telling him, if you build it, they will come. And so he, build, he basically plows his farm and builds a baseball field and his family thinks he's insane. And that in the real world, that would be the end of the story. They would just commit him to an insane <laughs> asylum, but it's Hollywood and all that stuff. So, this is actually one of the first analogies that I ever started using with my client in the USA. It's a very popular movie, not one of my favorites, really. Uh, but you know, just because you build something doesn't mean somebody's going to show up. So you build this great product or website that's got this great user experience. Um, nobody's going to use it if they don't know about it. So it's you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, you know, maybe they'll find it eventually, that sort of thing. But if you use marketing, you can you know, you need to get the word out. Hey, this is awesome. Um, and you can use your customers to do that as well, but you know, it, it helps to get the word out for sure. So marketing leads people to an experience, but the experience is what they will really remember. Nobody remembers like, oh, I remember that really cool thing I clicked on and it took me to this website that I didn't really like. Nobody says that. Um, what they'll remember is I, click, I went to this website and it was terrible. Um, it made all these promises or, or that it was awesome. You know, either way, it doesn't have to be terrible. Um, and what they say after the experience matters because now they're telling people about it. They've experienced something. They have an impression of your website, your brand, your company, and now they're telling people about it. What are they telling people? Um, it's, it's really based on the user experience in many ways. So marketing creates awareness. Covered that. So one way we're doing this now, content marketing. It's the new SEO. That's what I heard that all last year at the digital marketing conference that I went to in Denver. Which surprised me because I was like, what was the old SEO? I was trying to understand what people were doing before and apparently it was keyword stuffing. So um, it's a new digital marketing approach. Um, one where we provide information to people who are looking for information. I call it common sense. Um, it's not really new because uh, I've always done it that way. I didn't know it was a thing. Um, and I'll show you what happens with that. So basically, we've never heard this before, right? Content is king. That's, that's a new phrase. You guys, write, write that down. Uh, we've never heard that one. Apparently, a lot of people didn't know that. Um, so digital marketing requires content. Of course it does. Um, so traditional SEO is dead. Finally, Google came out with this update about Panda. And they were talking about this at this conference I went to. And I started thinking about it. And it was like, there's like Panda, and now there's like Penguin, and there might be like Aardvark, I don't know what's coming next, but basically what Google is doing is they're fixing their algorithm so people can't exploit it. You know, they can't stuff keywords into things, and you know, the content actually has to be relevant to what the website's about. Um, you know, basically it's, it devastated many SEO companies, um, mostly those who spent their time trying to trick Google instead of developing useful content. Um, so basically no more tricks, you know, they finally made adjustments to the algorithm that understands when you're just cutting and pasting across your website or copying content from other people's websites. That's the devastation that people are facing. You can't copy and paste stuff from people's websites anymore. Uh, which surprised, I, I was like, who didn't know that? Okay, so, you know, we don't see any going back from this concept that quality, rich, diverse content is going to win the day because the ultimate goal is that a search engine wants happy users. Yeah. I think we know that. I mean, who didn't know that? Did anybody not know that before right now? Have I shared any new information with anybody? That I, didn't, I don't think so. If you raise your hand, I would ask you to leave. So, um, so basically, this is a real story uh, that I was, look, I was like looking into this. I was like, why is this such a big deal? Uh, you know, this guy kind of had a blog. I've got all the links on here. But basically, he had a bunch of loops, wrote posts with 30 to 50 words with one image and a link. 
something which we can say doesn't add much value to readers. I had a couple of choices. You could no index them, delete them, or update them with detailed information to make it a quality content so it would be helpful and useful to readers. Um, that's just scary to me. <laughs> The fact that you thought you believed that he had choices in that matters. Oh, I have to like make my content useful and informative. Yes, you do. Okay, so here's what happens now. So now every all the SEO people are on this content marketing thing, and it only works if it's done properly. So we have all these SEO people that are used to stuffing keywords, trying to write content. <laughs> so what we get is this: um, these sorts of examples um, should be helpful, accurate, relevant, and useful. Um, this is not, um, and these are all real, I find these on my phone and they make me laugh, so I take pictures of them. Uh, leadership, 75 apps that will save you time as a busy professional, the right apps, no, be more productive. I'm a busy leadership professional. I don't even have time to read the title of this, much less 75 ways to save time. I mean, that's, how does that, who has time for that? I don't, personally. It's painfully ironic. Stuff with keywords, the content. I mean, I didn't even, that's, I was just like, wow. Um, so we have another kind, ridiculously useless misinformation. This is a real thing that I just saw from a top SEO company in my area. Um, are title tags necessary? Yes, that's, that's this article, it's already too long. There should be one word, be, yes, that's the end. Uh, yes, you need title tags. It's an HTML, it's like the number one ranking factor in SEO. That's, if you, there's one place you're gonna stuff keywords, it's in the title tag. So, yeah, if I can answer your question, if I can read your article with one question or one word, it's not you. So, this is the worst kind of clickbait. These are discussions, uh, and this, I had to respond to this one. It says, concrete proof that every woman eventually turns into her mother. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know much about women or relationships, um, but I know any man with like 1% brain power knows that this is not a conversation you want to start. So I, well, this, this article could be titled, How to Start a Fight with Your Girlfriend. Um, it's bad. And they do this intentionally because it, it outrages people. You can see all the comments and likes and all that stuff. People are like, what are you talking about? This is horrible. What they're trying to do is start a conversation. They know it's bad. They want to piss people off. So it's clickbait. So now there's this huge conversation going on about how much they hate them for writing this and their website's getting all this traffic and you know they're basically doing it for the money. And it's horrible. Don't do that, please. Uh, there's more to life than money and it ruins the internet. I, I don't know, if, if it went away completely, I wouldn't have anything to make fun of, so. <laughs> Come on, what's going on here? I did something. <laughs> oh. So the good news is the bar is set very low. We see, I mean, we see that stuff on Facebook every day. I mean, you, I mean, you can't get away from it. That's that is the content marketing landscape, and it kind of comes from SEO people trying to, you know, they're modifying their style to kind of fit into what's happening now, and they're not doing a very good job of it. So the good news is if you do a good job. You're, you're ahead of probably like 70% of the competition immediately. Um, so here's a good example of content marketing. Um, I like it. This is an article I wrote for the Joomla Magazine last month. Um, and I'm definitely biased in saying that it's good, but um, I, I like this. I have five reasons to choose Joomla. Okay? It's short, it's to the point, it's directed at our audience. And it's got some simple things like why, you know, like user interface or the uh, standardized interface and the ACL. Reasons that we use Joomla, and they're kind of related to the real world. This makes it a good choice for you if you're trying to do this or that. How I know this is good, um, I mean, this got more shares and likes in the first day than every other magazine article I've ever written put together. Um, this, is the kind of, this is the kind of information that we want to share with our users. It's got a clear <coughs> title. It appeals to our audience, Joomla users. Um, it's easy to share. Um, I wrote this with people can share it with their clients because it has clear product information that relates to the real world. And I think that's why it was so popular. I mean, it, it went around, people can give it to their clients, be like, oh, so did you see this? This tells you why you should use it. You have this kind of site, so this is why you should use Joomla. That was kind of the idea with it. We're taking the theory and putting it into real world practice, and, and that's what's effective. It's easy to share, it's got a short title, et cetera. And bonus points, it has an amazing author, me. Um, so check it out if you haven't, it. it's pretty cool. Um, so marketing efforts drive traffic. UX provides the first impression. So what users experience is important. So when they click, what happens after that? It affects your reputation, your brand identity, and your company image. You only get one chance to make a first impression. 
That's the, everybody knows that saying, um, but it's true. You know, these are some stats. You know, once your page loads, users form an opinion in about a half a second. So from an unconscious psychological standpoint, what they see immediately, they start making judgments in their mind, whether it's good or bad, whether they like it, they don't like it. Even if it's on an unconscious level, their, their cognitive process is already working. So three out of four users admit they decide on a company's credibility based on its website design. So if you've got a bad design, they're judging you. You're judging your company on it. They're not saying, oh, this company's pretty cool, but their website kind of sucks. They're saying like, ugh, this company, is, what's, what's going on? So nearly 50% of users who had a bad experience accessing a business website on a mobile device thought the business didn't care. And I think that is so true in, in so many ways. It's not necessarily that they didn't care about them, but maybe you don't care about your own business. When we have people that come into Joomla, for example, they get into that interface and there's no help and they don't know what to do, it's this really confusing thing. You know, people, that's what people walk away thinking is like, well, I guess this isn't for me. Like, they haven't built this for me. This is not something I should use. Um, and that's not what we want people to say. Um, it's, it's too, it's, they feel like, they take it personally. People take things very personally. Um, and from your, you know, sometimes you say, like, well, this isn't working. And somebody be like, well, you have to go here, and then you go there, and then it, and then it works. Um, your general website traffic audience is not gonna give you that chance. They're just gonna say this doesn't work and they're gonna leave and then they'll remember you later and they're gonna be like, oh, I had a bad experience. Like that title tag thing. Um, I mean, that's permanently ruined my image of that company. And I would never hire them to do SEO. If they have to write an article about that, it's damaged their, I didn't even have to click on it. It damaged their reputation in my mind. I didn't have a good feeling about them in the first place, but you know, just by seeing that, it's, it's um, you know, people make judgments about that. Um, I feel like I skipped a slide somewhere, but here's some, here's some easy things you can do. Um, you know, we want people when they click, they come to your website, everybody's on mobile now. I mean, I've seen stats, all the stats are in the 60, 65% range of traffic. Um, I just did a marketing video for my company and I was looking at the stats and it was almost 80% mobile traffic. So we really need to start thinking about these things. Uh, this is the one piece of technical information. It's very easy to do this. Um, how about when somebody has to put in their phone number, the phone pad comes up. Wow. You know how you do that? You put TEL in the input type instead of text. Um, the URL's got the .com on it. That's, that's how you do it, email. You know, it's got the at, the .com. You can change the keyboard very easily by using these, um, these type attributes. Very simple, many Joomla extensions uh, for forms, you can actually pick that in uh, what, what kind of form field it is. And it makes a huge difference. When somebody has a phone number, they click the phone number and it says, do you want to call this number? Very easy, you just use a tell, uh, you know, instead of an HTTP link, you use a tell link. Um, very simple ways to interact. I don't see this enough. Um, you know, we don't, we don't see this very often. Um, I totally skipped a bunch of slides, but that's okay. Uh, we're kind of getting, so there's some, uh, there's some uh, other resources here, style guides. Um, Brad Frost is my hero. He's speaking at Jim Day Denver, sales pitch. If you want to come out October 1st or sponsor me, I would love you. Um, but these are great examples. I mean, if you go to style guides, I mean, there's like a gazillion examples of style guides, pattern libraries, responsive resources, um, all of that. So some professional advice, uh, we're kind of getting to the end here. Uh, focus on solutions where everybody wins. Okay, we want to create a content marketing strategy that we're building content, not only for our website, but also content that drives traffic to the website. And since the content relates to the website content, it all works together. Um, your clients will love you for that because they'll get lots of traffic and lots of sales and then they make more money and then they can pay you more money and their users are happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody wins. That's what we want. Um, marketing efforts are only worthwhile if the UX delivers. And I think that's very true. You can have the best marketing in the world, but if people get to your website and it sucks, they're gone. It's all for nothing. Um, you, lose, you could lose almost 70% of your users within the first five seconds of your web page loading. That's real. Um, so if UX doesn't come through, marketing, you know, marketing, you'd be the best marketing team in the world and they're just, they're fighting an uphill battle. So um, UX is critical during marketing interactions. Um, kind of just demonstrated that. Uh, everything needs to be real, usable, and accessible. And, you know, you have to think about what people, why are people coming to your website? What, what is the experience that they're looking for? If we think about that for marketing and UX, I mean, that's UX's job to think about that most of the time. But if marketing people think about that a little bit more, it, it helps them drive traffic to the website because we're thinking about what people want. We're thinking about their motivations and then it all works together and it's usable and accessible. It needs to be accessible on every device, et cetera. We all know all that stuff. Um, 
And in order to do that, a lot of times, uh, you kind of have to take yourself out of the equation. Um, and that's, uh, that's actually a good point that I like to make a lot. I mean, as a, as a UX person doing UX for Joomla, I definitely have to take myself out of the equation. I can't just say like, this is what I think Joomla should be and that's what it's gonna be for everybody because I'm definitely in the minority being from the States, not as popular in the US as it is in other places. And the way that I work does not work for everybody. I've, I, my perspective is only one perspective. My job is to take the perspectives of every user and find the things that are gonna work for everybody, not just me. Um, so you gotta you kind of, it's hard to do that sometimes. You have to think like, this isn't about me. It's not about what I want. It's about delivering something for my audience, my users, my customers. What do they want? Because if I can give them what they want, they will give me their money. And that's what I want. So um, that's my motivation in a lot of times. So always think about your users. Um, Kind of goes without saying, but you know, just do your part to make the internet better for everyone. I mean, some of the examples I showed you were ridiculous, but we see that stuff so much. Don't do those things. And I think the slides I skipped were like pop-up ads. You know, you go, um, <coughs> you go, so you click on one of those things, and then you're just instantly bombarded with pop-up ads. You're like, oh, sign up for my thing. Well, it's like, you know, you get a survey within two seconds. Like, what do you think of my website? I'm like, well, I just got here and I hate it because um, I, I haven't actually seen it and now I have to fill this thing out. Um, you know, and they're actually blocking their own content marketing. They put all this work into content marketing and they're like, oh, well, Phil, do you want to sign up for our newsletter? It's like, well, I want to read this. You know, I mean, give people, give them some time, you know, before you just start bombing them with pop-up ads. Don't do those things. Don't write bad content. All you have to, it's very easy. Just, you don't have to think about it. What are you doing? Write about that. Uh, I can't tell you what to write because original content is the key and original content by definition is something that is created, it's unique than everybody else's content. So whatever that is for you, do that. Don't try to trick people. Don't try to trick people into clicking on things. Don't try to trap them into marketing forms, etc. You know, just do, do what you're supposed to do. Think about what you would want. Would this bother you? If it does, don't do it, you know? Um, that's, that's all we, we, we can all We can all chip in, make it a little bit better. Like I said, the bar is set very low. There's a lot of bad websites. I was trying to pay my bills yesterday because I forgot to do that before I left. I was just like, I can't believe how many steps I have to go through. I'm trying to give these people money. It's like, oh, click here. Oh, you didn't click the box. You, now you have to go back. I'm like, I'm trying to pay you. And there's like 900 steps and I'm like running out of time. I'm like stressed out. It's just, I mean, these are like huge companies like State Farm Insurance or Excel Energy. I mean, they've got million dollar website budgets and it's just terrible they're like you have to if you want to pay us it takes 30 steps it's like that's not a good user experience. i'm not too happy about having to pay them in the first place now i'm just more pissed off because it takes me 10 minutes instead of five seconds um, so think about those things um, we can do more when we work together i said that um, that's my motto and that's what this is really all about you know if we all work together we can do more as individuals we can make a difference but together we can change the world um, and that's all Thank you. I've got questions. questions, comments, thoughts? Nothing? <laughs> Seriously? I can, I can talk more if you want. <laughs> no, no comments? That's good. I like that. I like you. So, yeah, I mean, it's just common sense, you know? I mean, it really is. Um, just do do the right thing. You know, there's, there, we all need to make money, but there's more important things in life than money, and that's kind of my message here. We can we can do a lot. We can do better. We can all do better. And the internet's kind of a nasty place, and sometimes it's like, Ugh. so be one of the good people. So, that's all I got. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys for coming so much. Thank you.